So Penn Live is here in Palmdale, just south of Route 422 with Elaine Mason, um, who lives in the Keystone communities. Keystone communities. And um, this is what her neighborhood looks like this morning. So what was it like yesterday, Elaine? Well, actually it looks better today. Yesterday it was all the way up here to my porch and uh, we had to move our vehicles at about 4.30 in the morning because uh, it was up to the doors. And this is something that we experience any year that it gets rainy and um, it's a little bit challenging to be able to deal with it. Um, but on this street, we just know the drill that if we know we're gonna get an inch or more of rain, we hear it on the news, we just automatically move our cars. Several trailers in 2011 were washed away when the hurricane came and a couple of them have been replaced. Uh, my neighbor was afraid he was going to lose his uh, HVAC unit yesterday. If you, would, if you even walk in the grass here, it's totally saturated with water. Um, they put the bridge in, I think, after the 2011 flood because people were stranded on that side of the street and couldn't get out. So they had to build the bridge, the walking bridge. And actually, in this park, there's only one way in and one way out. And uh, so if it snows in the winter and they don't get that opened up, it's, it's a challenge to even for the seniors and myself to even get out of the park. So how many people live here? I think there's about, a rough guess would be 80. And uh, a big percentage of them are 55 plus. There's a few younger people in here, but um, basically it's a senior uh, mobile home park. So I guess uh, these two cars that I see along the street, they were not home when... Uh the water rose? This car hasn't been moved. I don't know if it got water damage back in 2011. Oh, gee. But it just, uh, this time it tore the front bumper off and the one across the street, that one was washed away down the end of the street in 2011. So they're actually um, not roadworthy. Okay. So where is this water coming from? It's coming up all the way up off of Lingle Avenue through. I may not have the, the name correct, but there's a, a Algiers uh, land up there, farming up there, and it comes, uh, that creek, first of all, will flood over. And that's the one right along Lingle Avenue? Right along Lingle Avenue, and everybody knows that one. It'll be blocked off first thing because it floods right across, and when that floods, then all that water comes down through here, and it's channeled right down through my street. The other streets in the park are fine. It's just this one. This is the lowest point. This is, is the lowest not? point in the park. Yeah. I'm a, I understand that it's a flood zone, I did not have full disclosure of that when I bought my mobile home. I was not informed that we were in a flood zone. Since then, I tried to get flood insurance, um, and I was told that FEMA is maxed out with the hurricanes of last year that hit Texas and uh, the Gulf Coast, that all their money is spent. So I could not get flood insurance for my trailer. So did you have damage? How long have you lived here? I've lived here four years and okay. I don't have damage. Some of these newer trailers have been put up on pilings. They're elevated off the ground. Now, if the water would come up to my skirting and a little higher, then my, all my insulation is going to be damaged and then it would have to be replaced and that would be very expensive. And to my knowledge, that would not be covered on my homeowner's insurance. They don't cover for outside waters invading into your home. Okay. Only if I would have a broken pipe. So mm -hmm. it would be my expense. So when you were got the call to move your car, um, that was early Monday morning? Yes. At 4.30 Monday morning? Yeah, I actually just woke up because we know uh, we're on alert here. The neighborhood, the neighborhood is on alert. So we got our vehicles moved and I was saving within about an hour then Derry Township Police arrived just to make sure they went door to door that everybody had an, evac an evacuation plan. And my daughter and I, we had already packed an overnight bag, put them in our vehicles up on the next street. And I have a, a daughter and Palmyra that I could easily go there and another daughter at the top of the park. So we have plan B in place and so we're just always very vigilant and uh, fully aware of the challenge that we have living here on this street. Yeah, so did you say this street is actually, uh, it used to be a stream or something? Or yes, it's my understanding that there's a creek underneath and um, then when it tries to flow out of here, there's not a good stream of flow. They have the solar farm down there, but um, I don't know what the holdup is for any excavation to happen or a drainage system to be put in. Uh, that I don't know who has that property. Um, apparently, it's not something that anybody is really concerned about uh, when our street gets flooded, but it seems to me it could be opened up that we can have better drainage. So do you know who owns that solar farm? Uh, actually, the owner of the park does. Okay. Um, and then, but the... Hershey Corporation is involved in a lot of the surrounding properties 
and um, so I don't know if that's even anything feasible that they would even consider or think about. All the people across the street, have they already left, evacuated? Uh, no, they moved all of their vehicles and um, some of them still work jobs, but they uh, actually they can't cross this way and they have to go find their cars two streets up, but they have to go down to that walking bridge down at the end. And yesterday the water was coming over the top of the bridge. So a couple of older women, senior women needed assistance by some men to even, when they moved their cars, they couldn't get back. They had to have help to get back, and they were soaked up to their waist. Okay, did they come back now? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I can easily cut through the backyards here to get to my vehicle. Okay. I'm fortunate that way. So you think most of the people here on your side of the street are still here as well? Yes. Okay, and yes. how high did the, your water come yesterday? It came all the way up to the skirting of the trailer, but uh, only for about an inch deep, and it only lasted for maybe an hour before it started to recede. So it receded um, yesterday in the afternoon, in the, uh, towards evening, and then overnight. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine this would be. Oh. It's very, it's very discouraging, uh, dis disconcerting because uh, you, you don't really go soundly asleep. I was up constantly, about every hour, looking out my front window just to see where the water was, and uh, so you have to be vigilant to take care of yourself. All right. Thanks, Elaine. You're welcome. So again, um, Penn Live is here in the Keystone Communities uh, Mobile Home Park, which is in Palmdale, south of Route 422 in Derry Township, or most people know it as Hershey. Mm -hmm. um, and this is uh, some flooding along Elaine Mason's street, the most, the south, southernmost street in the Mobile Home Park. Last night, the water was um, coming over, or early yesterday, it was coming over the top of that walking bridge at the end of the street. Um, some of the people on the south side of the street here needed assistance to uh, get across and get to their cars. They had gotten an alert to move their cars early Monday morning. Um, the car you see here has been sitting here since the last flood, so that's not a new, um, that's not new damage. Um, but they're keeping an eye on the, the rain and the rising waters um, and people have moved their cars and they can get to them hopefully if they need to evacuate but no one's been evacuated at this point. Uh, we'll be doing more reports uh, elsewhere in Hershey as the morning continues.